Greg McCowan's first book, Essentialism, was all about how eliminating the unnecessary can help us identify and prioritize what matters most in our lives. And in his second book, Effortless, Greg teaches us how to take seamless yet focused action on what matters most in our lives. McCowan reveals that he wrote this book to help you lighten your burdens rather than to downplay them, to make it easier to focus on what matters most. The effortless state. What is it? The effortless state is when you feel fully focused on your work. You don't feel rushed, but you do feel present. You don't feel overwhelmed, but you do feel capable. You don't feel like you're working on the wrong thing because you've already identified the right thing to work on in any given moment. When these elements are in place, you can take effortless action. And in this audiobook summary, we'll cover how to make that happen. Here's what you'll learn about in this audiobook summary. We'll talk about how to identify and make it easier to do what matters most to you in life. We'll talk about how to get into the effortless state. We'll discuss how the biggest thing keeping us from doing what matters to us is the false assumption that it's got to be something really, really difficult. We'll talk about how to boost your productivity and your focus by making the easy but pointless things harder to do while simultaneously making the essential and meaningful things easier to do. We'll discuss all of this and much, much more in this audiobook summary edition of Effortless. Here is a quick tweetable summary to describe this book in a nutshell. Life does not have to be as hard and complicated as we make it. Simplify and take action. Now, before we dive into the big ideas, here is a crucial quote pulled directly from the book. Our brain is wired to resist what it perceives as hard and welcome what it perceives as easy. Greg McCowan from Effortless. Now, you ready to dive into the big ideas? Let's get into it with big idea number one. Keep it simple. Most geniuses prosper not by deconstructing intricate complexities, but by exploiting unrecognized simplicities. That's a quote by Andy Benoit from Effortless, written by Greg McCowan. Now, as human beings, our instinctual perspective is that important and high-impact tasks have got to take a lot of effort and a lot of time, while tasks that take little effort have little impact on our lives. Just not true. But still, we human beings, we tend to criminally underestimate the effectiveness of smart work while overvaluing hard work, considering it the only method to achieve the results that we're after. We continue to subconsciously accept that the hard way is the right way, which might actually do more harm than good. Naturally, our brain tends to favor easy tasks over hard tasks. We've got a bias to act on what's easy. And this bias is also called the principle of least effort. The human tendency to take the path of least resistance to achieve what we want. Now, this subconscious instinct of taking the path of least resistance is what's really propelled the human race forward and guaranteed the survival of our species. Early humans were constantly on the lookout for the easiest way to survive, gather food, and protect their families. Things like this, the pursuit towards the easier approach of doing things, have pretty much always been beneficial for humankind. But how does this fit into your life? Here's an actionable insight to help you put these ideas into action. For this first big idea, keep it simple. Your actionable insights are to first remove complexities. Just take a deep breath and analyze everything that you're about to do before rushing into it. Because a lot of times we're burdened 
by the self-imposed complexities of doing tasks. So figure out the end result that you want to achieve and work backward from there to figure out the simplest and least complicated way to reach your goal or to complete your task. Next, practice what's called effortless inversion. Effortless inversion means looking at situations from the opposite perspective. It encourages asking, what if this could be easy? And then proactively getting good at accomplishing things by putting in less effort. For example, in addition to asking a question like, how do I become financially independent? You should also ask yourself, how do I not become financially independent? Because setting up your questions in this way encourages you to look at what you need to do and what you need to avoid in order to achieve your financial goals or any other goal for that matter. Effortless inversion. It's all about examining your problems from opposing angles, which comes in handy when you want to avoid big mistakes that could keep you from achieving your goals. Big idea number two, focus on what you have. Quote, gratitude is a powerful, catalytic thing. It starves negative emotions of the oxygen they need to survive. It also generates a positive, self-sustaining system wherever and whenever it is applied. End quote. Expressing gratitude is really one of the best ways to get closer to your effortless state. And again, the effortless state is a state in which you are physically rested, emotionally unburdened, and mentally energized. You're completely attentive, completely present, and totally focused on what's important in that moment. You're able to do what matters most with ease. Now, there's a concept in the field of positive psychology known as the broaden and build theory, which McCowan mentions in the book. And this theory suggests that cultivating positive emotions, happiness, anticipation, deep interest, joy, etc., can broaden your awareness, encourage creative thinking, build resiliency, and generally just help you develop a higher sense of satisfaction and well-being in your life. For example, when you're feeling an emotion like joy or cheerfulness, you're more likely to smile and chat with random people, which may end up leading to a friendship. When you're feeling curious, you might pick up a book, which might lead to expanding your knowledge about a new subject, which might lead to new ideas, which might lead to a new business idea, which might end up changing your life completely. Broaden and build. Basically, positive emotions lead to positive actions, which can lead to a higher quality of life. Now, on the flip side, negative emotions, like stress, which we've all experienced, can make you feel more likely to take actions that feed that cycle of negativity, unless you catch yourself and break the cycle, which brings us back to gratitude. To put it another way, what you focus on will expand. If you focus on what you have, then that will expand. If you focus on what you lack, well, you'll end up with more of that. Practicing gratitude for what you have on a regular basis is one of the best ways to get yourself in that positive upward cycle of the broaden and build theory. And it's a crucial part of living the effortless lifestyle, of getting yourself into the effortless state. So here's your actionable insight for this big idea. Broaden and build. Now, by following the broaden and build theory, you too can reap the benefits of positivity and gratitude in your own life. You want to work on cultivating positive emotions on a daily basis. Because life, it can get in the way. It can send you spinning. But if you catch yourself, and remind yourself to be grateful for what you do have rather than what you do not, you can quickly get yourself back on track. Positive emotions open up new doors of possibility for us, whereas negative ones 
close those doors. Next, let go of grudges. Grudges occupy and drain way too much of our mental energy. By forgiving and letting go of grudges, we relieve ourselves from the grip that negative emotions can have on our lives, and we end up being able to focus more on the things that we truly care about. Next up, quit complaining. Complaining creates a vicious cycle of negative emotions, and our judgment is clouded as a result. Our mindset narrows, and we tend to be less welcoming of new ideas and opinions. This significantly reduces our opportunities for growth in many aspects, and we inevitably get sucked into a downward spiral. And the next and final actionable insight for this big idea is to use habit recipes. Now, if you've got a habit of complaining, a great way to stop is to use a simple formula, again, called a habit recipe from B.J. Fogg's book, Tiny Habits, which McCowan talks about in Effortless. Again, this is known as a habit recipe, pioneered by B.J. Fogg, an expert on habits. And here's how it goes. The formula is, after X, I will Y. So, for example, after every complaint, I will immediately mention something I'm grateful for. So, in practice, this might sound something like, gosh, I hate having to wait in such a long line just to get a burger and fries. But... I'm grateful to have the opportunity to have a warm meal in the first place. So for more on how to build better habits, if you want to learn more about habit recipes and how to build better habits in your own life, both personally and professionally, check out our summary of Tiny Habits at getflashnotes.com slash tiny dash habits. Next big idea, big idea number three. Learn to relax. Relaxing is a responsibility. As odd as it may sound, considering how much we love to relax, we've actually got to learn how to take a break. Because as we navigate through the inevitable stressors and complexities of modern life, it can be easy to forget to just take a step back sometimes and relax. The best way to restore our physical and mental energy is by taking short breaks periodically. Regular short spurts of just doing nothing actually prove to be very effective in rejuvenating people. And in order to be effective over the long term, we've got to avoid exhaustion and we've got to be mentally sharp and physically present in any given moment, at least while we're working. In order to do this, we need to recharge our batteries via rest and relaxation. Now, speaking of rest, the massive benefits of sleep are often unnoticed and overlooked. And Greg points this out in the book. Getting more sleep can be the best way to nurture your body and your mind. Deep and undisturbed sleep. It's fundamental to the body's functioning providing time for much-needed recovery and relaxation, preparing you for upcoming work. Now, although it might not be for everyone, a great way to snag more sleep is by taking regular naps during the day. Now, this might seem counterintuitive at first, since many of us are more conditioned to staying up and getting things done during the day, but if you do it properly, napping can provide a major boost to your physical and mental potential. So here are some actionable insights to help you learn how to take an effortless nap. Now, when you have sensed that you've reached a saturation point in terms of focus, you want to step away from your work and put yourself in a calm state of mind by taking a few slow, deep breaths. Block out any light, and any noise to help you relax a bit, maybe put on some calming music, then set an alarm and try falling asleep. In the meantime, resist the thought that you've got to be doing some work. Avoid feeling guilty, because the nap is only going to better equip you for the tasks that you've got ahead anyway, 
So get that nap in. Let go of the work. Let go of the projects you've got on your mind. Put your phone away or turn it off. Put it on Do Not Disturb. And get a solid nap in. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, that's ideal. Not too long, just a short power nap to re-energize you, to recharge your batteries. And the first few attempts that you make at napping, especially if you're not a napping person, if you don't take naps, it could be really challenging, maybe even worthless. But like any other habit, it gets easier to take planned naps with practice. You eventually learn to take effortless naps without guilt and you'll reap all the benefits of having done so. Big idea number four, just start. Quote, the first action may be the tiniest, easiest to overlook thing, but it's surprisingly fierce. Unquote. Far too often, people think too much of a particular task and end up stopping even before taking the first step. As the saying goes, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. The most difficult step towards progress is the first. Again, the biggest obstacle, regardless of what you're working on, is often the reluctance to take that first step. This resistance in getting started is arguably the biggest challenge to progress in anybody's life. Now, the sole purpose of the first action, or the start, as McCowan calls it, is meant to get you acquainted with the activities that will slowly and seamlessly merge into becoming part of your routine. Just the act of taking the first step can have an incredibly positive impact on your progress, no matter how small. For example, committing to reading the first page of a 600-page book, well, that's considered a start. So here are your actionable insights for this big idea. First, focus on taking the minimum viable action. This is the action that provides the maximum amount of learning or results with the least amount of effort. Breaking down the first step into small, actionable tasks makes it easier and more likely for us to take action. Think of the case of Reed Hastings, the co-founder of Netflix. Hastings had originally envisioned Netflix to be this great undertaking, reliant on technology that didn't even exist at the time. But instead of getting lost in building a complex model based on assumptions of the progress of the internet and where it might be, he decided instead to find the most practical way to take action on his plan, which was to simply mail himself a CD through snail mail to see if it would be a sensible option to get started with. And, well, we all know where Netflix is today. Next, the power of two and a half seconds, 2.5 seconds. In the book, McCowan shares studies that found that the typical human attention span is actually only 2.5 seconds. This is our psychological present. It takes us just two and a half seconds to shift our focus from one thought to another. This makes us susceptible to constant distraction. And social media companies capitalize on this all day long, enticing us down distraction loops that last hours by producing bite-sized pieces of content. Something as trivial as 2.5 seconds can have a compounding effect. And before we know it, we end up buried in distractions for hours upon hours on end. So what do you do about it? Here's what you can do. First things first, catch yourself within the first two and a half seconds that you realize you are being distracted or enticed down some sort of loop that you know you don't want to be in, right? Catch yourself within the first 2.5 seconds and cut the unhelpful distractions off before they take hold. Also keep in mind that within the first 2.5 seconds of getting a great idea, thinking about something positive, 
you can keep up that momentum and continue down that path. For example, within the first two and a half seconds of getting a great idea, you want to jot it down rather than let it slip away because the next two and a half seconds, it might be gone. Poof, just like that. So remember, progress happens in tiny increments and the power of 2.5 seconds is sometimes all it takes. Big idea number five, start from zero. Quote, no matter how simple the step, it's still easier to take no step, unquote. By asking yourself, what are the minimum steps required for completion, you get going on projects that may otherwise seem complex and cumbersome. Removing unnecessary steps grants you more time and more energy towards getting the more important things done in your life. The story of Amazon's growth towards becoming the largest online retailer in the world also had a component of introspection to find the simplest possible way to complete online purchases. The company's founder, the well-known Jeff Bezos, thought that the long process of filling details into subsequent pages hampered the frictionless ordering experience that he wanted to provide. And the more steps it took to complete an online purchase, the more time it gave consumers to reconsider their purchase or even cancel their order. So, Bezos called a meeting and pointed out that customers should be able to order products with the least possible amount of effort. He suggested that users should be able to complete the checkout process with just a single click. This shift towards the one-click approach, which Amazon patented, helped them leapfrog the rest of the e-commerce market back in its infancy. In pretty much every domain, completion is exponentially more valuable than creating fragmented steps that don't fit into the overall experience, that don't make it seamless, effortless. Hence, your focus must be on completion rather than obsessing over the trivial things that prove to be nothing more than time and energy draining components. Focus on taking the least amount of steps possible to provide the highest quality amount of work or output or result that you're capable of producing. Remove the unnecessary. Keep your focus on completion, on the essential. And this makes you more likely to prioritize output, by the way, over micromanagement of input or analysis paralysis. Here are your actionable insights for this big idea. Again, keep it super simple. The more steps and layers you add to a project, the more complex it becomes, making you less likely to take action on that project. But by keeping things small and simple and getting rid of complexities, you'd be doing yourself a huge favor, both in terms of saving time and energy. Big idea number six, embrace the rubbish. Quote, there is no mastery without mistakes, end quote. A major roadblock that we impose upon ourselves is trying to get everything right the first time with zero tolerance for imperfection. Overachievers typically find it really hard to come to terms with the idea of starting with quote-unquote rubbish, as McCowan calls it. They have unrealistic expectations from themselves at every stage of the process. This kind of perfectionism can cripple you. Relieving yourself from the self-imposed pressure to always do everything perfectly will be immensely helpful for you in the long run. This aversion towards making mistakes, it can be counterproductive and reduce learning experiences and opportunities for you. In order to make effortless progress in any domain that you're looking to improve in, whether it be personal or business, encourage yourself to make 
learning sized mistakes. Learn from the mistakes, course correct, and move on. For example, a lot of people consider learning a new language to be a very meaningful, very valuable skill in their lives. Now, despite being aware of the benefits of learning a new language, they fail to practice because they feel embarrassed about making mistakes and they fear being judged. They want immediate proficiency without having to go through the hard linguistic mistakes and corrections that come with learning any new language. But while you're learning a language, embracing mistakes can help you. It can help you learn the language at a much quicker pace. It's all about constant course correction, and you can apply it to nearly every domain of life. Here's your actionable insight for this big idea. If you ever find yourself feeling overwhelmed by a project that you feel must be flawlessly executed, just lower the bar a bit, just a tad bit below perfection. You'll often end up with something better than if you'd obsessed over making every little detail absolutely perfect. Let your mind run free. Get to work without judging the quality of the work that you produce along every inch of the way. And by doing so, you give yourself more ideas to build upon by embracing imperfection and having the courage to produce something, even if it's rubbish, we can get started. And as we make progress, we become less rubbish and eventually exceptional, possibly even masters in our pursuit of meaningful work. Progress made with rubbish is much better than no progress at all, as it can eventually end up providing you with the direction for something remarkable. Big idea number seven, learn principles over methods. Quote, knowledge may open the door to an opportunity, but unique knowledge produces perpetual opportunities. End quote. In today's day and age, it becomes increasingly tempting to find easy instructions and fixes that can be applied to a problem immediately. However, although it may be more convenient in the short term, understanding the underlying principle behind a solution proves to be much more useful and practical in the long run. A method may be helpful in solving one particular type of problem, but the applications of principles are well beyond that of methods. Learning principles better equips us to deal with and avoid specific problems in the future. Principles are kind of like the building blocks of knowledge, and they can be applied multiple times once you grasp them correctly. It's the whole idea of give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. So here's your actionable insight for this big idea. How can you actively seek to learn principles in your everyday life? Well, the next time you're on the lookout for solutions or methods to fix your problems, try to understand how and why the method might be effective in fixing your problem in the first place. What's the why behind it? How does it work? And once you've successfully figured out why something happens, or how something works, you can easily apply that knowledge over and over and over again to various other fields. Just that one-time effort will yield effortless results over time. As aptly quoted by Harrington Emerson, the man who grasps principles can successfully select his own methods. The man who tries methods ignoring principles is sure to have trouble. Next insight here is to grow a knowledge tree. Think of knowledge as if it were a tree. Take time to understand the principles, which you might think of as the trunk and the big branches on a tree. Once the trunk and big branches, i.e. the principles, have been grown, metaphorically speaking here, the details, kind of like the leaves, are more likely to find branches to hang on to. So just like how a tree can support the growth of new branches as it grows thicker and stronger, 
Our brains can similarly grow connections, embedding new information into our existing foundation of knowledge. Elon Musk, the founder of Tesla and SpaceX, is a great example of somebody who fully utilizes the brain's ability to learn and process new information. Musk's everlasting quest for the fundamentals has helped him revolutionize the energy industry, design a system for hyperloop travel, and launch his own aerospace company, among many, many other accomplishments. He is an extraordinary example of how, by just simply understanding things at their most fundamental level, extracting the principles behind how something works, and then applying it, repurposing it, looking at it from different angles, by understanding these things, we can apply them in new and surprising ways. Next insight here is to learn the best of what others have figured out in other fields. Often, the best ideas may result from combining existing knowledge in a field with newfound inspiration from other disciplines. This exchange of ideas across disciplines has the potential to lead to breakthrough discoveries. Next insight, read books. Books may arguably be the most effective way to learn the best of what others have figured out through their own experiences. They provide a condensed description of all the major learnings of an individual's lifetime. Reading books, or book summaries, is one of the highest leverage habits that you can develop. Here's how to get the most out of what you're reading. First, use the Lindy Rule, which basically states that the older a book is, the more likely it is that it will survive in the future. So, look for books that have lasting power, books that have been around for a while. Next, read to absorb, and not just for the sake of it. Fully immersing yourself in a book is more effective, and it makes you more likely to retain information. Next, take notes. Jot down your takeaways at the end of every chapter. Write down what you learned after you're done. This process helps us turn information into understanding and understanding into unique knowledge. The next and final insight here for this big idea is to take the road less traveled. Being good at something nobody is doing is better than being great at something everyone is doing. Being an expert in a relatively uncommon domain is far more valuable than being proficient in a saturated domain. Focus on building unique knowledge specific to your area of expertise. Knowledge may open the door to an opportunity, but unique knowledge produces perpetual opportunities. Gaining unique knowledge may be intensive, and it may be effortful. It might demand dedication and effort over a long period of time, but once the initial work required is put in, once you've put that sweat equity in, you create something invaluable, which attracts opportunities for the rest of your life. Big idea number eight, leverage trust to get residual results. Taking a little time to build a foundation of trust is a valuable investment in any relationship. It's a lever that turns a modest effort into residual results. The best way to leverage trust is by selecting trustworthy people to be around. Having trust in your relationships makes it much easier to maintain and cultivate them. And at work, hiring someone trustworthy starts with hiring someone honest and diligent, someone with a strong moral compass and a sense of accountability. A person who's conscientious is more likely to uphold a high ethical standard, even when no one's looking. Hiring the right person, it's a vital decision that produces effortless results time and time again. Choosing a trustworthy candidate is invaluable 
and makes it much easier to fully reap the benefits of effective delegation if you do it right. Here's how the famous investor Warren Buffett finds the right candidates to hire at his firm, Berkshire Hathaway. To determine who's trustworthy enough to hire or work with, he looks for integrity, intelligence, and initiative. He places special emphasis on integrity, without which intelligence and initiative would be counterproductive. Bottom line, who we hire is an extremely crucial decision with great consequences in the long run, either positive or negative. Each new hire may influence future hires, eventually shaping the workplace culture over time. So, your actionable insight here is to create a high-trust agreement. When you're leading or managing others, a high-trust agreement is where expectations are clearly defined in advance. Goals are shared, roles are properly delegated, and the right results are prioritized and rewarded. This type of well-defined agreement is preferable because it saves us from a lot of uncertainty and disappointment in the future. Taking time early on to clearly define roles and goals is helpful. It reduces gaps between our expectations and the actual work that somebody produces. It also builds trust. Taking time to build a foundation of trust is a lever that turns a modest effort into residual results. The next and final big idea, big idea number nine, is to solve problems instead of managing them. Are there any recurring problems or frustrations in your life or work? Rather than simply hacking away at the branches, try striking at the root. Since it usually takes less time to manage a problem than solve it, we get used to little irritations that we don't see as problems worth fixing right then and there. But in the long run, the time and effort it takes to manage problems is much higher than just solving them at the root. The initial investment of time and effort that you put into solve a problem, any given problem, can save you a lot more time, effort, energy, and resources in the future. Managing problems is like hacking at the branches. In order to prevent problems before they arise, focus on striking at the root. The earlier you identify a problem and solve it, the more likely you are to avoid a difficult situation. Your actionable insight? So, how do you start solving problems instead of managing them? Find problems that irritate you repeatedly and figure out how easy or difficult it would be to solve them sooner rather than later. Make a list and look for small actions that would make life easier for you in the future. The goal here is to find the most annoying problem that can be solved in the least amount of time. Closing Notes The key takeaway here from Effortless is this. Each new moment, whether you're at work or whether you're at home, each new moment is a chance for you to start over. It's a chance for you to make a new choice. Your actionable insights? First, keep it simple. Remove complexities because this makes you more likely to accomplish your goal. Simplify. Next, quit complaining and be grateful. Gratitude generates a positive cycle and system that makes you more welcoming of new ideas, generally boosts your productivity and overall life satisfaction. Quit complaining. Be grateful. Next, focus on solving problems instead of managing them. Again, focus on solving problems instead of managing them. To prevent problems before they arise, you got to remember, strike at the root cause of the problem. And then one final crucial quote 
as we close out this audiobook summary of Effortless by Greg McCowan. Life does not have to be as hard and complicated as we make it. Each of us has, as Robert Frost wrote, promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. No matter what challenges, obstacles, or hardships we encounter along the way, we can always look for the easier, simpler path. 